Back in the days, a telephone, a camera, a flashlight, and an MP3 player were all separate items. In 2007, the first smartphone was announced by Steve Jobs, which could almost do it all, and it changed our lives forever. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. It's like a Frankenstein's monster of all these tools and gadgets, and for that, we thank Media Convergence. Media convergence is the joining or converging of distinct technologies into one. It takes completely separate ideas and smashes them together so that we're left with one big idea. We use our cell phones every day and more than we'd like to admit. It's become to the point that we don't notice how much media we consume every day, since the more intense our media usage becomes, the more invisible media is to us. Our devices and media are so intuitive, so natural to use, they slowly migrate into us and they become ubiquitous. Now, where exactly did media convergence come from? Well, it appeared from the digitalization of media content and rapid internet usage, which results in allowing new forms of content to emerge and the transformation of various industries, services, and work practices. First up, technological convergence. Arguably the most significant type of convergence, it is the merging of technologies that allows us to access previously inaccessible technologies on one device. For example, the iPhone. As various media content was once tied to specific communications media or platforms, cinema, newspapers, magazines, radio, and broadcast all had their own purpose. Today, however, due to the World Wide Web, tablets, and smartphones, people can now access all sorts of media within one digital device. This leads to the development of cross-media content in which material is provided in different formats through portals and links that are relevant to similar resources. After technological convergence took off in the 90s, industrial mergers and media players began to enter the game of convergence. These giant media players aim to diversify their products across various platforms. Let's pause for a second and go through what, for example, Time Warner owns. Just to name a few, they own DC Comic Universe, HBO, CNN, Time Magazine, and of course, Warner Brothers Pictures. These giants are apparent in every mass media ever, just as Disney or in a digital sense, Google. People came to face smash in a stampede, right? Yeah. But it wasn't because they saw pictures of hot girls. You can go anywhere on the internet and see pictures of hot girls. Yeah. It was because they saw pictures of girls that they knew. People want to go on the internet and check out their friends, so why not build a website that offers that friends, pictures, profiles, whatever you can visit, browse around. Maybe it's someone you just met at a party. But I'm not talking about a dating site. I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. The birth of social media jump-started a new routine for media users by shifting its gear forward from the passenger to the driver, or in this case, the audience to participant. This lean-forward shift caused user-created content to appear in which it becomes more challenging to distinguish the amateur from the professional. Transparency also becomes one of the media content's production's characteristics, since it is more social, collaborative, and shared. This allows plenty of space for user anatomy and an increase in user participation and diversity to take place. Also known as cultural convergence, transmedia storytelling is the result of media convergence engaging with professional media, which is very tightly connected to brands and franchises being distributed across media. Think about Harry Potter. It's a book. It's a movie franchise. There's a theme park, a website where you can quiz on which house you're in. Brand extensions also interconnect with transmedia storytelling due to acquiring new audiences and product sales, therefore gaining profits and revenues. Many media critics assume that digital technologies such as the World Wide Web, virtual reality, and computer graphics must divorce themselves from earlier media for a new set of aesthetic and cultural principles. The theory of remediation argues that new visual media achieve their cultural significance by remodeling earlier media. The evolution of media can be observed as just one big chain of remediation. Photography remediated painting, film remediated stage production and photography, and television remediated film and radio. Based on previous events regarding media convergence and how it continues to evolve, this sphere has a broad path ahead of it. The possibilities for future media convergence are endless. For example, what if media continues to fuse even closer with its users? Will we be able to upload our thoughts in real time in the future without touching a keyboard or a screen? I mean, this is obviously sounding increasingly like a Black Mirror episode. Everything that's encoded in memory, you could, uh, you could upload. You could basically store your memories um, as a backup. How will we achieve long-established principles of media policy? And what will replace our beloved smartphones? Ultimately, what is the next step in media convergence?